Hi, and thank you for joining me here at Las Colinas Golf and Country Club in Spain. My name is Chris Ryan, and welcome to video three in this video series, The Most Common Faults in Golf. We've already covered the grip, we've already covered the club face. This video is going to be looking at transition between backswing and downswing, and discussing a really, really common fault that I see amongst the amateur golfers. So thank you once again for joining me here at Las Colinas Golf and Country Club and welcome back to this video series, The Most Common Faults in Golf. We are now on to video number three. If you're watching this for the first time, you haven't seen videos number one and two, I will link them down below. It would make sense if you watch those first because this video series does kind of continue uh, and videos one and two will help you with what we're going to cover in this video. So what are we talking about in this video? Well, we are talking about the angle that the golf club is on as we change direction between backswing and downswing. And the fault that I see is a golf club which is too steep. So by too steep, we mean approaching vertical. Too flat would be approaching horizontal. So this is one of those things that we tend to see uh, as a trend, the better players would tend to have the club shaft flatter in transition and the higher handicappers would tend to have the club shaft steeper in transition. There's many things that you will have in your golf swing down later on in the downswing. You may well have some what we call early extension. You may well have some kind of handle higher impact. However, these are often a result of the club shaft being too steep in transition. So if we can get that fixed, we should see a lot of other things good happening later on in the swing. So what do we mean by too shallow and too, or shallow and too steep? So if I demonstrate this downswing move in transition here, you can see how the golf club references an area which is outside of the golf ball. This would be absolutely fine. This is what we tend to see from the better players. They would tend to have the club shaft shallower in the downswing than they had it in the backswing. The higher handicap golfers who struggle would tend to have the club steepening in the downswing. So you can see how the grip of the club points more out towards my heels. And as I said, from here, we're gonna to start to see a lot of other faults happening to try and shallow that golf club. If it isn't shallow here, it will, or you will attempt to shallow it later in that golf swing. That attempt will come from, as we've said, an early extension, early extension, I should say, of the body. The hand path moving out towards the ball too late in the downswing. You may even find that you tip your upper body back and you side bend to the right in an attempt to shallow it. All of these things are you trying to recover that poorer position early in the downswing. You may well be able to recover it, but it's gonna be the expense of the strike, the consistency, the distance, all of those things that we do obviously really want in the golf swing. So how are you gonna get your club shaft better in transition? We're gonna do two little drills. One is covering how you move your trail arm, and we're gonna show you what that one is now. So we're gonna take a starting position. You're gonna take your lead hand and you're gonna place it behind the elbow or the bicep, I should say, on your trail arm. You're gonna make a backswing and your right arm is gonna be folded correctly at the top. Now, the golfers who would tend to have the better transition would tend to have this elbow and the shoulder, shoulder staying in external rotation, the elbow starting to lead the movement down. The golfers who tend to have the steeper club shaft would tend to have the top, the elbow would stay and the hand would move down towards the golf ball on its own. You can see how my elbow hasn't really moved. What we're effectively doing there is we're taking our shoulder and we're moving it towards internal rotation. If I do that with the golf club, up to the top, elbow stays, arm moves down towards the golf ball. You can see how the club shaft steepens excessively. So if we get this trail arm working correctly, we should have a club shaft which works pretty well. If the trail arm suddenly starts to go towards internal rotation too soon, you're gonna find that the club shaft steepens. You then have to make those compensations uh, that we discussed a moment ago. So really, really simple little exercise. Up to the top, grab your trial elbow, and as you start to rotate, feel like you work that elbow back in front of you and feel like that leads the wrist, it leads the forearm. Never feel like the wrist and the forearm are getting ahead of that elbow. If you can do that, that's you maintaining some external rotation. You're gonna find it much easier to get yourself into a good delivery position with the club shaft nicely shallowed. The other little exercise that you can do, and I call this the Sergio drill. If you watch Sergio Garcia, he has got a very pronounced flattening of the golf club. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your golf swing all the way up to the top, and I just want you to feel the weight of the club head. And if you were to relax the grip, where would that weight go? It would go this way. What I want you to do is I want you to allow that to happen for a few seconds, and then spin the club out to the ball. 
So you're gonna go up to the top, you're gonna let the club drop behind you and then spin out towards the target. And you're just getting this feeling of a club shallowing. A couple of those, and then you can start to blend that together. And as you start to blend it together, it'll start to feel a little bit more like a golf swing. Now, the drill with the right arm is gonna help you because moving that right arm in the correct way is gonna help that shallowing feeling. So the drills have to kind of go in that order. Get the right arm working better, get the sensation of allowing that club head to shallow before it moves out towards the golf ball. And I guarantee you'll have some much better impact alignments because you won't be trying to fix something that was incorrect in transition. So, fault number three in this series is a club shaft which is steep in transition. It would not surprise me if many of you out there watching have got this fault. It is something we'd like to work on because it's very difficult to play consistent golf with that club shaft too steep. Right, let me see if I can hit one into this. Uh, this is the fifth hole, you know, just the, just the 220 yards with water left. Um, so I've got a five iron, which I think should be enough club. So let's go ahead and see if I can get this ball on that green. Anywhere on the green would be good. I would definitely take a three here. Okay, well, I've actually hit that absolutely right on the flag. Okay, I'll definitely take that. It's just come onto the front of the green. Probably needed, probably needed one more club there, but I will definitely take that on this tricky par three. So a shallowing club shaft is something that the better players do. A steepening club shaft is something that the high handicap golfers do. There is a definite trend and we see that all the time. So work on that right arm, work on that club shallowing, and I guarantee you you'll be able to have some much better impact alignments. Huge thank you once again to Last Cleaners Golf and Country Club for hosting me. I'm sure you'll agree the course looks absolutely fantastic. I've been out here for three days now filming some content. There are some really, really interesting holes. If you get chance to get here and play, definitely make it happen because you will not regret it. The practice facilities are also superb. Right, thank you also for watching this video. Thank you for watching the video series. Make sure you stay tuned for video four, which is covering something down at impact. Hopefully I will see you there.